Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're checking in with Bare Minerals. What's happening with them? Do they have new products? Are their old products still good? We're doing a full face and we're also more specifically reviewing the new formulation of the Bare Pro Powder Foundation, which I personally really like. One of the only powder foundations I think is good. So hopefully this one is even better. We will end up seeing, but if you wanna know, what's up with Bare Minerals? How they doing? keep watching so let's jump into it if you do hear a fan in the background i apologize it's just so freaking hot in here especially when i'm filming but let's start with the base products i just have my skincare it's been sinking into my skin for a little bit so most of the stuff that we will be trying today is just to revisit things that i have tried before but we're trying them out again seeing if they're still good products and then we have some new stuff as well one of them being a new or shall i say reformulated powder foundation of theirs so this is the bear pro 16 hour skin perfecting powder foundation so they did release this before this is a reformulation of it i did like the old one i think their bear pro line is really good especially in the summer it lives up to the 16 hour wear like such long wearing sweat proof makeup and this claims to be a breathable full coverage powder foundation that provides sweat humidity and transfer resistant 16 hour wear with a natural matte finish visibly even skin tone and texture over time to perfect the look of bare skin non-drying and absorbs oil it says that you can use this wet or dry so i have two shades three shades here i have fair 10 neutral fair 10 warm and then i have 415 neutral from what i know about bare minerals shade range is that it like sometimes runs a little bit orangey or peachy so i'm guessing the warm will be the best but let's go ahead and swatch all of them just for reference so actually just feeling this powder compared to the old one it does feel very different it's super smooth like the smoothest powder i've ever felt so you can't really see this one because it actually matches me quite well. This is Fair 10 Warm right there. Basically non-existent. Sorry about that. And then this one is Fair 15 Neutral. Yeah, it's weird. I feel like their neutral shades run like very orange. That one definitely is not going to work. That might be like my self-tan shade, but my self-tan is rubbing off, so that'll probably be a pass. Then we have the Fair 10 neutral which should be the lightest shade here but you can still sort of see that like peakiness to it i think the fair 15 warm is for sure going to be my best bet so we will be using fair 15 warm and you do get a powder puff in the back side of it so they also sent a brush which has my name on it spelled incorrectly the package that i got had my name spelled correctly so i don't know <laughs> why but anyway they have the brush that goes with the product and i think i'm going to attempt to apply with this brush first although this is not something i would usually use for a powder foundation maybe if i really want to build coverage but we're going to go ahead and swirl in our product here i feel like this picks up a lot and then i'm going to tap off the excess i feel like that's a classic like bare minerals move did get powder all over my desk though and I'm gonna start in the areas where I need the most coverage. I have like a lot of breakouts going on right now. So we're gonna try to cover those up. So this foundation has a lot of claims, one of them being 16 hour wear. It also says it's humidity resistant, sweat resistance, transfer resistant. It's a lot going on. Right off the bat, it's not super full coverage, but it looks like incredibly smooth. Like it looks stunning on the skin. It will definitely show a close up once I'm done applying. I just feel like this brush is a little bit too small to keep attempting to use this. I think it's good for more like targeted areas where you want to build coverage, but let me grab a different brush. So I think like a semi dense brush like this would be perfect. BK Beauty, this is a 106. So it is pretty fluffy and soft, but it has some density in it. So it's not going to like eat all the powder. So going back in, and I like to stipple on powder foundation. I have a lot of texture and stippling in general just always works a little bit better for me. Shades a little light. I have this like neck pimple going on. Then I will go in and do some buffing just to soften everything. This looks so good. I'm really impressed. I feel like it definitely is looking different than the Bare Pro one, the original one. I do like that. I actually still have them. But I think this one is looking like a little bit less heavy on the skin like it really is just 
this soft airbrush type of look. So this is a first impression. I haven't tried the new formula yet. I'm so surprised by how skin-like and smooth, like this is super airbrush looking. Just looking at the difference between this side of my face with no makeup and this side, like this just looks like my skin. And usually I find powder foundations are so heavy and usually I can't get them to work with my skin because I have a lot of texture on my cheeks, on my forehead. It just tends to cling to that. Even though I really love the idea of powder foundations because they're a lot thinner. Like it literally feels like I'm not wearing anything on my face right now, which is so nice, especially in summer. So let's do this side of the face and then we'll review. So I will say I don't think it's immediately that full coverage. Like I did still have to build on it quite a bit to get the coverage that I wanted. And I still have a lot of spots showing through. So maybe doing some spot concealing before this would be helpful. But just to help conceal those more, I'm going to go in with Fair 15 Neutral, which is a bit darker. And I'm just going to build that on my spots just to neutralize the color a little bit more. Since this one's a little bit darker, has a little bit more warmth to it. I'm also going to build it on my redness, hopefully neutralize that. I feel like with these kinds of foundations, it would be really like ideal to have like a deeper shade for bronzer, a lighter one for highlighting, and then like your actual skin tone. Then you could really build this like nice three-dimensional look. Or you could just use one shade if you wanted to be super quick. I usually find myself using powder foundations like that, like just to throw something on. So here is the base after a couple layers of the foundation. I don't think the shade is that great. You can't really tell on camera, but it's very pink in person. It's very smooth. It does look a little bit powdery. I did put quite a lot of product on, but usually if you let this sink into your skin or sort of warm up with your skin, that kind of goes away, especially if you use the setting spray. But I do really like how smooth it looks. Another tip is if you're using a powder foundation, I highly recommend shaving your face because powders can really like cling to that and make your skin look more textured. I really like one from Dermaflash. They just have this one. They have a portable one and they have the full size one. I have both. They're both amazing and you basically just like shave your face and it makes your makeup look super smooth. I will link that below, of course, if you want to. If not, just be aware of that. Maybe use a damp sponge to sort of pat that down and it could take that look away. So I currently don't have any dry skin, so I'm not sure how it would look over dryness. It's maybe looking like a little bit emphasized where my pores are, but overall for a powder foundation, I think it actually looks really good. So moving on to concealer, I already had a corrector on when we started. And then I have their concealer, which is just called the Well Rested One. It also has SPF 28 sunscreen because it's a mineral product, which is really nice, especially for under the eyes. But I believe this only comes in one shade and it's like pretty dark. So this might end up looking crazy, but I'm just putting a little bit in the lid and then I'm using this BK in Angie Hot and Flashy A506, which is just this sort of like tapered, it's almost like a blending brush, but for your under eyes. And I really like to work the concealer in and make sure I get all the extra off because this can look just a little bit heavy if you go in with too much. You can just tell it has this yellowness to it, which is nice for canceling out darkness, but if you're very fair, it could end up being too dark. So you might be able to tell, but you can just see like, it has a very different tone than the rest of the foundation. So I'm going to take sort of like a bigger brush and more of the concealer and I'm going to try to like blend that in by just putting a little bit on my cheeks. And by the way, this Bare Pro foundation is a matte finish. You know how Bare Minerals can sometimes have that like sheen in their products if you've ever used them. Like this concealer has a little bit of a sheen to it. It's not shimmer, but it's not a flat matte, but the Bare Pro foundation is one of their flat matte products. So it's not going to look shimmery or anything in the sunlight so i do actually really like this concealer especially for on top of other concealers like it just gives you a really good full coverage but it sucks that it's only i believe one shade because it just doesn't really work for me unless i have a tan on like it does work but it's definitely not ideal so be aware of that that's not something i'm like totally on board for even though it's a pretty nice formula. So onto the bronzers. I have one here. So I have tried the Bare Pro Liquid Bronzer as well, which I like, but I'm gonna stick with the Endless Summer Bronzer, which is just their pressed bronzer here. I think this is the darker shade, but they're pretty sheer. This one just has like a nice 
cooler undertone to it. And with this, I'm taking a fluffier, this is a Luxie blush brush actually. Again, making sure there's not a lot of extra product on there. And I think I definitely need some warmth to this face. What I really like about powder foundations is it's only like one layer of product versus when you use a liquid, it's set with powder. At least I need to set my liquids with powder, which can end up like looking more cakey just because it's more product. And you can just go ahead with your powder products and blend them in. I really like how natural this bronzer looks. It's actually like very sheer in pigment. So it's just nice and buildable. You could keep dipping back in, building your pigment. It doesn't look too crazy. I'm actually gonna go in with a Fair 10 Neutral of the foundation, which is the lightest shade. I'm actually going to clean up the bronzer and sort of add a highlight under the cheekbone to sharpen things up. So I do really enjoy this bronzer. There's like not a ton to say about it. It's a nice bronzer, it's pressed. The shade is really nice. I think that's my favorite thing is it doesn't pull too red or orange. They really got a nice shade for it. And then moving on to their blushes, which is one of the most like popular new Bare Minerals launches. They were limited edition, but now they're a permanent part of the line. My favorite is Kiss of Pink because it's this light peachy pink and it has like just the perfect amount of shimmer in it, especially when we're using a matte foundation. These are so smooth and creamy, they're beautiful. Taking more of a domed shape powder brush. And these are pretty pigmented. Definitely start with just a little bit and blending that into the bronzer. I don't really feel like these blushes are like bronzer, like the name says. I think they're kind of just blushes and highlights. It's more of like a bly light. I guess that name's not as nice. I really like the shimmer that it gives, again, with like such a matte base. It's so pretty to have really shimmery cheeks. So the bronzers are a big hit, love these. Use this very frequently, especially in the summer. Just gives you like the prettiest glow. Like you can see the sheen, but the shimmers very finely milled so it does not enhance the texture. And then moving on, also from the Endless Glow collection, one of my favorite collections, they have highlights. This one you can tell is very well loved and used. This is the shade. Zen, which is a very light frosty pink, which is actually light enough to not show up dark on my skin, which I appreciate. They also have a light purple one. And then I also really like using this one, which is Joy, more as a blush topper. It's sort of like that peachy pink coral. Oh my gosh. The sheen in these is just perfect. I'm gonna use a little bit of this on my blush just because I feel like I have to put it on just a tiny bit. And then I'll be using the Zen one as my actual highlight on the very tops of my cheekbones, down the nose. And that's about it. I do like to sweep it up because then you get this like nice connection. You don't really want anything on your face to be too disconnected. Like bronzer, you want to sweep it. Highlight, you want to sweep it. It looks a little bit more natural that way. Before we move on to eyes, I did also want to mention their powders. The original Mineral Veil I do like, but this is, oh wait, this isn't Mineral Veil. I have to use this one too. So this is called their Clear Radiance. I don't know if they still make this, but it's their all over face color. And this is really like an interesting product. I would describe it like a highlight that's like a little more subdued. It's like a blush and highlight. It just has the most like slight amount of shimmer. You can't even see it. But I really like using this on top of blush, but we already sort of did a lot. You know what? Let's put it on. It won't hurt. I'm just taking my same blush brush. And this is like very light, so I feel like I can like almost bring it up under my eyes as well. I wanted like that really like a weak look. It's too shimmery for me to want to use it all over my face, which I think is what they recommend. So I just keep it like in the cheek area. I think it's super pretty like it adds this kind of glow that I haven't found in any other kind of product Like this has been in my everyday makeup drawer for a while really unique fun product But I also wanted to mention their original mineral veil Which I find is like still too pink for me when I have my non self tan on but also when I have a self tan on it just casts pink which is super weird but if you like mineral veil and you want a different option they have the mineral veil 
compressed version, which is a actual translucent version of Mineral Veil. I use this as a setting powder a lot. I think it's the perfect like touch up powder. It's really thin. The compacts are nice. This is a great on the go type of product. So like this one, the original Mineral Veil, although I actually love how that looks on the skin and under the eyes, the shade is just weird. I wish I had a real translucent version of the loose one too. So I already have a little bit of my brow on. So let's talk about their eyeshadows. I have two palettes. These are their Mineralist eyeshadow palettes and they're really cute. They look like book, especially when you stack them next to each other. So I have the shade Burnished. These are all nice like paper packaging and you can slip this out and then recycle this part of it. So you get some like interesting shades in these. Let me show you the other one and then we'll discuss. So this is the other one I have here, which is like a pinkish purple. By the way, before I forget, it is 2.49, so basically three o'clock. It's when we applied this foundation, so we'll keep that in mind because I will be doing a wear test to see how the foundation looks. It won't be for super long, but we will get an idea of how it works. So my thing with these like palettes is I feel like this is a warm palette, right? And then they give you these like cool tone browns, which are kind of confusing. Like when I look at these, I almost get more confused instead of inspired to like create a cool look. So I think we're gonna go in with the burnished one and start with like this shade, which is Spark 5, which is just this mid-tone pink. And we'll just make this the crease shade. Formulas are definitely like on the lighter pigment side, which I do like. It just makes them like really buildable, blendable, easy to use. I think a lot of Bare Minerals is like easy to use makeup and it always has this like natural soft effect to it. Like I really want a warm brown but I can't find one in one of these palettes. Let's go into the other one which is the shade Blossom 3. It's like a little bit more purpley, kind of build some depth. So I'm gonna pull out my Makeup by Mario palette and use this like light mustardy shade. I use this basically every single time I do my makeup. I just like having warmth in my crease even if I'm doing like a more pink look I think it just goes a little bit better that feels more normal we have this like lighter yellow to pink transition now i'm also taking some of this deeper mustard shade from the makeup by mario palette and deepening my crease i just really depend on these like mustardy shades from this palette i did that on my lower lash line as well so i think if you like cool tones like you probably really like this palette or like i think this purpley one is really pretty but it's just not something I wanted to go for today. So keep that in mind with these palettes. I'm gonna dip into Earth 4, which is this like taupey color. And I'm gonna put this in the outer V of my eye just to create even more definition. So I think I'm gonna use this like garnet color called Heat 2 just on the outer portion of my eye using my finger for the most pigment. Cause again, these aren't the most pigmented shadows. And then taking the brush we use for the crease to make sure it's blended. Yeah, I don't know about this eyeshadow. It kind of is like literally disappearing when I blend it. Did you see that? They just like don't really stick. They're more of a sheer wash. So moving on to something that I do really like, which is one of their loose eye colors in the shade Queen Phyllis. This is so pretty. One of my like all time favorite lid shades. It's this very light champagne. Now these are definitely more pigmented and you could build them up. Oh my gosh. Like look at that pigment. This would be so pretty as a highlight, maybe a little bit dark on me, but I really like to use this shade wet as well to really like bang, pump up the pigment. So I just misted my brush with a little bit of water and then I pick up the product in the lid. And then since the eyeshadows that we were using weren't really giving us a lot, this is going to be our star of the show. Isn't that just pretty? I love this shade. So the loose eye colors love these little palettes. Don't love for me if you like sheer shadows or cool tones. You might like these. They're just not for me. I just feel like they kind of just washed away. Like, mm, I don't get it. I'm also just grabbing a white shade to help along our eye look. This is one from NYX, which is called Whipped Cream. It's a matte white and I use this all the time. Just on the inner corners and brow bone. Now for eyeliners, I have their Mineralist eyeliners, which I like. I really use these a lot. I have two shades. I have copper and then I have garnet, which I think will go well with our look today. And these are a gel liner, I think. They're just super pigmented. I mean, beautiful, last a super long time. So this one is garnet and then that first one was copper. I think we're gonna start with copper 
and then maybe build with garnet. But I start by smudging this into my lash line. I mean, I like to take a little tiny smudging brush to blend this out. I absolutely love metallic eyeliners. I think they're such a fun way to add like sparkle and fun to your eye without being too like over the top. I also have this more champagne color called Diamond. It actually has like a taupiness to it. We're gonna use this in the waterline. So this look didn't come out quite as nice as I was hoping. I was getting like a lot of fallout when I was blending the liners. So they were kind of crumbly, which is weird because I hadn't used them before and I don't remember them doing that. Maybe they're drying out a little bit, but they're really nice on the waterline. And when you first apply them, maybe I was just using like the wrong type of brush for them. Um, but yeah, like it worked, but definitely not my favorite. Uh, for the mascara, I have the Maximus Mascara Tongue Twister, which I think is their newest mascara. Let's go ahead and curl the lashes first. And I do like the Bare Minerals, the Lash Topia. I'm not sure if they still make that. That has like a really nice chunky brush on it. Oh my god. That's the most massive mascara brush I've ever seen. That might not be a good thing. Did I try this before? I think I might have tried this before. It has just so much product on it. I have to wipe some of it off. Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna try this. You definitely have to be very careful with this wand or else you could just get so much mascara on your eyes. It's not even funny. So I don't mind this look. I think having a lash comb with this, how did it even get over here already? I think having a lash comb with this would definitely be helpful. It's very voluminizing. Let's do the other eye. Do we dare put this on the bottom lashes? I have to. I guess I have to try. So I did smudge it on the bottom lash line. We're gonna have to let that dry before we even attempt to clean it up. But like, I really like this effect. It's super voluminizing, so it makes your lash line look very thick. But I don't like being that stressed out when applying mascara. Like it's very like living on the edge mascara if you need that in your life, like maybe. We'll see how it ends up wearing because I have no idea. I don't remember how it ended up wearing, but like it looks pretty. But the brush, it's ridiculous. Let me show you a regular mascara wand compared to that. So this is the Maybelline Sky High. This is a relatively like skinny brush for mascara. But still, I don't mind a big brush, but the amount of product that it has on it is just crazy. I also want to mention that in my smile lines, like the foundation is greasing. So I'm going to try to just like blend that in while we can. Okay, that looks better. It might've just been like a little bit of extra product. While the mascara is drying for lips, I have their, I believe those are also the Mineralist. Yeah, Mineralist Hydra Smoothing Lipsticks. Love these lipsticks, had them for a long time. They're like a satin smooth, not full coverage lipstick, but has good pigment to it. And let me swatch some shades here this is the shade focus really gorgeous like rosy pink and then we also have memory which is very similar but this one has a little bit more pink let me go ahead in with a little bit of lip liner first so this one is focus they're super thin like almost feel like a gloss in a way really interesting and then i'm going to take that like really light shade called balance just for the center of my lips I was like doing this for more definition. If you didn't already watch, I did a like total lip shaping 101 with lipstick and lip liner. If you haven't seen that already, it'll be in the info card. But when I'm feeling like more lazy, this is what I will do. Just like combine two shades of lipstick. So I'm definitely not head over heels for how this turned out, especially the eye makeup, not my best work. But I do want to like add a mist to my face. I'm just going to use the Chantecai Flower Water. I'm not going to use the setting spray because I don't want to like interrupt how the foundation would wear on its own but just to like, you know, add some moistness to this. Okay, I definitely think that helped things out a little bit. My favorite thing is like the skin. It looks really pretty and like glowy for being a powder foundation. If it wasn't so pink, I'd be really, really loving it. But let's go ahead and do a flash test, see how we get. So I went ahead and did a flash photo just with mineral makeup. You never know how it's gonna show up, but it actually looks like super nice and smooth in pictures, yeah love that no flashback personally uh the skin looks good let's briefly go over my thoughts on everything and of course i will be doing a wear test for more specifically the foundation but everything else starting with the new foundations love the application looks super skin like it looks really beautiful it might look a little textured on dry skin again i'm not sure but i will recommend shaving your face i think that really helps with powder foundations but in terms of powder foundations, I think this is one of the best formulas just application wise that I've tried in a long time. Hopefully it wears well. I know Bare Minerals usually wears really well on my skin. 
They're really great for the summer, so I have high hopes for that. Hopefully it will wear well. On to the concealer. I think I used too much. It's a little bit too shimmery. We did put a lot of shimmer on though. That's just my fault, but the shade is also too dark. So I do like this, but only if you think the shade's gonna work for you. And then for the bronzer that we tried, love this, love the shade. I think it gives such a natural bronze. For the highlight, already know I love that. Blonzer, again, one of my favorites. These little like book eyeshadows, I would honestly pass on, but I do really like the loose eye shades. The eyeliners, I'm not really sure about. They're really pigmented and pretty, but blendability wise, I'd still have to like experiment a little bit more. So Verdict is still out on the liners. The mascara, it looks really pretty. We'll have to see how it wears, but just based on the brush, it's like a hassle. There's better mascaras out there. The lip product, love the lipsticks, one of my top faves from Bare Minerals. So that was like my full face of Bare Minerals. I will check in later and we'll see how this foundation ends up wearing, hopefully well. Cross our fingers, let's see. I will see you at the end of the night. That was it for my full face of Bare Minerals. I hope you found this helpful and enjoyable. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you do and subscribe if you haven't already. The button is somewhere over here. Someone just tell me in the comments, please. Is this the right side or is this the right side? There's a button somewhere for you to subscribe. I love if you would use it, but thank you for tuning in and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.